guys and welcome back to Still Life. We're gonna pick up this very interesting book here and get a cutscene. What, we're gonna see our boyfriend there? Mark Ackerman? Mark Ackerman! It's Ackerman! So I was to take the fall for this, huh? You little son of a bitch. So you covered his tracks for money, huh? You know how many died for your greed, you bastard? Huh? Do you? I'll make sure you go down. Oh, yeah. You have the right to a phone call. Oh, my God. You little smartass punk. Something tells me it's not a good idea to beat up the police investigator person thingy. Something tells me it's not a good idea. That's not a good idea. I just beat the crap out of him. It's time to get the hell out of here. Yeah, you're thinking about that now. Perhaps before you beat him up, that would have been a good idea not to, like, get involved, yeah? Jesus Christ, you're dense. Um, Gus! Hi. Hey, friend. What's wrong? You look like you've seen a ghost. Ah, there's been another murder. Where's the body? It's at the old lavatory. But you can't get there. The bridge that went there has been out for years. Listen, this is probably going to be the last time I ask you this. But can you do me a favor? <laughs> well, I don't have the time right now. Time is the favor. Don't warn Skalnik right away. Just give me a head start. Can you do that for me? Okay, five minutes. No more, no less. Great. You take care of yourself. Goodbye, my friend. Goodbye? Oh, oh, yeah. Goodbye. He doesn't quite realize what's at stake. Then again, who does? Okay, I'm gonna give you three guesses on who is murdered. I don't even know how to get there. Is there a boat here? I need a boat. Can I get a boat? Where am I going? Bloody hell. There's never any real indication of where you're going, and I'm like... What bloody lavatory? What the hell? Laundry, Mark's place, old chapel, bridge. Ah, oh, sure, perhaps. We're going there. On the bridge, sure. Never mind, I'm stupid. Is there a boat here? Boat? A boat, please? Boat. Is there a boat? There is a boat. Oh my god. How shocked I am. What? You just floated a. Uh, whatever. Whatever. You just floated ashore, that's fine. And now the boat destroyed. Just, it's destroyed now. Good for you. Good for you, Gus. Now you can never leave this place. Good for you. Really good for you. I'm, I'm happy for you. Are you fucking kidding me? Do I have to climb up a fucking water thing? Okay. Fine. Fine. I've seen worse things happen, and stranger things happen. I suppose. I guess. I don't really want to get wet that badly. Maybe there's a way of draining the reservoir. Probably. Oh dear. Let me guess. Who is it? It's Apollina, I guess. But Oh dear. Another ring. Weird. This one looks like it was made just recently. Probably was made recently. Oh god, gunshots. 
what is the chances of that? He can't hit gas. A person who is relatively big, I mean in comparison, he can't hit gas, but he can hit a fucking... Locked. He can hit like a chain or, you know, a thing like that. I mean, what are the fucking chances? So I need... Oh, I hate puzzles. I hate it. I... I hate puzzles. Like, there is nothing worse than puzzles, and I'm playing a fucking puzzle game, and I don't know. So now that one has four units of water. Oh, yeah. There we go. Wasn't too hard. I thought it was three units of water, but I guess not. What the hell? I complicate things beyond my own. I don't even know. Right. I suppose we should get up then. Make our daring escape. Through the sewers. What a horrible murder. Yeah, well shit happens. So many murders. Holy cow. Let's go down. Into the sewers. You know, Skalnik for being beaten almost to death. He's very eagerly shooting, so to speak. Is there anything I need here? No, it doesn't seem that way. Right. Because this is so lovely. I mean, I love this puzzle. We want to go where it's lit up there. I'm, and I'm following a guide, because otherwise I can be here all day. Quite literally. Right. Okay. Left. Another body, I guess. Yeah. What's left of a body, anyway? Oh! Oh. Well. I'm so glad I went here. It's not that hard, really. Save the game, okay. We can do that. We can save the game. We can save it twice, actually. And that one is... here in the middle, I guess. So there. Alright, I think this is it. Yeah. This must be the key to this door. Won't budge. Oh. Thankfully. What the hell? <gasps> Wake up. Wake up, Alice. Look, 
I'm glad you followed the breadcrumbs, Mr. McPherson. I want oh, no. to witness my latest masterpiece. Wake up, dear. I wouldn't want you to miss the pain. Oh my god. And she's pregnant too. My god. Yeah, one can see why this is a touchy subject for Victoria's grandfather. One could clearly see that. This painting is called Death Do Us Part. The woman in this painting appears to utterly disregard the suffering of the man kneeling on the ground beside her. Again, we see the recurrence of a dark tunnel, with an ominous figure lurking in the shadows. It seems as though Ackerman is attempting to recreate a moment in his childhood with undertones of rape and suffering. Note the position of the man in this painting. He is vulnerable, weak, and exposed. Is this how Ackerman himself felt at the time? Cleansing of a soul. For the first time in Ackerman's work, a woman is depicted in a seductive manner. She floats on the canvas, her red cloak rippling in the wind, in contrast to the dead calm of the background. Red, representing passion and seduction, dominates the foreground, but is surrounded by ominous tones of dark purples, grays, and blacks. The colors of death. The woman's eyes are missing, perhaps representing increasing confusion and anger towards the women in his life. Bridge over troubled water. The woman in the foreground seems troubled and stares directly at us, seemingly unaware of the turmoil surrounding her. The vast and tumultuous sky, usually representative of freedom and openness, instead feels oppressive and looms eerily over the landscape. Is this Mark trying to get back at his mother? This painting is called Streets of Prague. Ackerman only lived in Prague for a few years. We can see the recurrence of a dark alleyway. Look at the colors in this painting. It's almost as if the walls are bruised and battered. Clearly Ackerman had a very negative view of the city. A sinner's pardon. The woman depicted here is clearly in a vulnerable and submissive position. She clutches herself as she struggles to achieve forgiveness. Perhaps one might see this as Ackerman's vision of how his mother should have asked for forgiveness for failing to protect him. The first one is called Abandoned. To the right, you can see a woman lying down, drunk, seemingly unaware of her surroundings. In the center of the picture are two eyes, eerily cutting through the darkness. We know that Mark Ackerman was abused by his father and felt that his mother, who knew what was happening, stayed passive and let the abuse continue. This is mirrored in the painting where the woman depicted seems unwilling to react to the approaching danger. This one is called The Pupil. The title suggests that Mark connected with the subject of this painting. Although trapped in his own prison, Ackerman was able to find escape through his pupil represented by the light reflecting through the window onto the subject. He is using this man to escape from his own prison. The title is Mindless. This man is literally mindless. Note the stitches on his forehead where he was presumably lobotomized. This represents Mark's worst nightmare, being trapped in a prison of both body and mind. Although standing in a corner surrounded by darkness, an open window sheds light onto the scene. In a cruel irony, however, the subject is unaware of this window to freedom and remains a prisoner. Ah, Beatrice. The woman depicted here, a nurse, seems to represent Mark's ideal woman, and perhaps she was. Attentive, 
loving and seductive, she is surrounded by angelic hues of white. Her skin tone is rich and alive, in contrast to his earlier works. This one is called Dr. Damn, Hyde, there's a lot of paintings. And is the first in his L.A. series. We know that Ackerman was committed to a mental hospital in the 30s. The man in this painting represents Mark's psychiatrist. It is a caricature of a dishonest man whose gaze is masked behind thick glasses. The painting has an air of condescension. Look at his smile. He looks like the village idiot. It is obvious that Mark had no respect or admiration for this man. This painting is called Moonshine Traffic, his second painting in Chicago. One senses that Mark is comfortable here. The sun is rising, pushing out the darkness. Notice the warm oranges, yellows, and reds. Perhaps Mark is finally at peace and feels at home in Chicago. Uh, this one here is called Disturbed Sanctuary and is the first in his Chicago series. One of the unusual aspects of this painting is the perspective from which it is created. One feels as though Ackerman is an unwanted guest in the room, almost hiding behind the curtain. The woman shown in this painting appears blissfully unaware of him or the darkness that surrounds her sanctuary of light. How wrong you can be. I mean, seriously. Seriously. <laughs> How wrong you can be. Um, but yeah, guys. It's, I've gone over time a bit, I think. I don't know. That bloody puzzle is probably going to take up a big portion of me editing and doubt. But anyway. I'll see you in the next episode of David Make. Bye for now. Love.